I think uh, I think it's the journalists that are going to solve end up solving this case because the police departments aren't putting the effort in to uh, first of all they they're not listening to people there are witnesses out there that uh, the police never interviewed and of course RJ has interviewed a, quite a few of those witnesses that have never been interviewed by the police department and so what we can do is is force them to do it by coming up with the information ourselves this is a j mix exclusive <laughs> Hello everyone, it's J-Mix here with TupacNation.net, and this week we bring you a very special interview with retired detective Russell Poole. Russell Poole spent nine years as a homicide investigator with the LAPD and had a career that spanned 18 years in law enforcement. He served as a primary investigator on at least 135 homicide cases and assisted on over 500 more. He is more notably known as being the lead investigator on the Christopher Wallace murder. You may remember seeing Russ Poole in the Nick Broomfield documentary, Biggie vs. Tupac, or you may have read his book, Labyrinth. This is part one in a series where we talk about the status of the cases, other people's theories, and what he's working on today. Russ, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Sure. I just had a few questions for you. Go ahead, ask me. All right, I, I have a few questions concerning the murders of Tupac and Christopher Wallace. Yeah, that's it's great because uh, eventually I think uh, I think it's the journalists that are going to solve end up solving this case because the police departments aren't putting the effort in to. Uh, first of all, they they're not listening to people. There are witnesses out there that. Uh, the police never interviewed and you know I just pretty much figure the police right now aren't going to do it but what we can do is is force them to do it by coming up with the information ourselves and then getting it documented and then taking it to the right people and uh, and I know a lot of people that are uh, interested in doing something about it here in the judicial system anyway if uh, I mean it's just uh, a couple of clues away from Saul at least Tupac Tupac's case for sure a lot of strong evidence on that right now I feel uh, because the journalism is still interested in the, the biggie and the Tupac case I believe that it's the journalists are going to be the ones to actually solve this case because right now the police departments aren't interested uh, in pursuing either case. I think it's it's great that uh, the journalists and the people out there are still interested. As a matter of fact, we just got through on current TV, uh, they had Biggie and Tupac on there just uh, a couple hours ago. And uh, my uh, partner that I'm working with never saw it, so he he watched it and thought it was interesting. But anyway, uh, I found over the last, since I left LAPD, that uh, journalism has done an excellent job to, to keep uh, these cases in the forefront. Do you think that the LAPD's priority lies in solving these murders or burying the facts of these murders? Well... I think they would like to, if there was a possibility to solve it, they'd like to get it out of their hair and get it solved. But I think that they, they believe, I mean, there's so many millions of pages and, and a lot of work uh, over the years has been done. And, and there's lots of different clues. And I think any prosecutor that actually got the case would have to sift through all the those files when it's it should be very simple the 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 murder case itself is just a very 
simple investigation, but when you have a high profile case, you've got like files and files which will become discovery at trial. So it's a nightmare for any prosecutor, so, and it's a nightmare for any detective. That's why you got to have a little bit extra on these cases. You got to have almost uh, you got to have that smoking gun and able to present that case to a jury. Do you foresee a prosecution in these cases with all the different clues and different theories that have been spoken about over the years? It will be a nightmare in trial. So that's why you almost need a, uh, you need a smoking gun so uh, a judge can take a look at that and say, none of this other stuff is relevant. We're sticking with this. That's what they need to do is streamline it. But right now I believe prosecutors and police and both Las Vegas and LAPD, I think they, are they would love to have this thing solved, but it's a discovery nightmare. And also, you've had the Rampart scandal. You've had some corruption involved. So you're going to have, like, police officers saying that this is what happened, and then you're going to have other police officers saying, no, I don't think that happened that way. So you see how mixed it can it can be. You had certain leaders like Parks, uh, and then you got uh, Charlie Beck in there, and you, you had Bratton, and they all got different philosophies on the on the case so it's it is a nightmare uh, as far as prosecution but there is a way to solve it without even going to trial it'll be hard to do you know, the way we do it is if you've got the evidence but in the interest of justice they're not going to file charges against the individual even though they believe this individual is responsible and and the reason why I say that a lot of times your your key witnesses have been killed or murdered, but but you have the evidence on paper and it shows that the, this this person is responsible for it, but we can't take him to trial because he can't face these key witnesses who are not available for court. And so I've done this before because uh, you know some of my key witnesses were murdered along the way. And uh, and it's just the way the justice system is. If uh, if your key witnesses, let's say a key witness made a statement years ago, and then and then you finally solve the case, but some of your key witnesses over the last ten years have been killed. Uh, there's certain rules and certain laws that uh, prevent the case from being filed in the first place because uh, those witnesses are no longer available and and cannot face cross-examination in a court trial. Speaking on different philosophies, I wanted to ask you about a certain one. Okay. There is a review on Amazon for a book called Murder Rap, written by a man named Greg Kading. In the review section, there is a scathing review from a detective, Russell Poole. Did you write that review? Uh, well, what does the review say? The review reads as follows. Greg Kading has no credibility on this subject matter. He became a task force member on the Biggie case 10 years after the fact. Kading left the LAPD in disgrace for his false testimony on a federal murder and racketeering case United States versus George Torres Ramos, CRO 656A. Guilty verdicts were overturned in this part due to Kading's testimony. He said LAPD cleared him of those charges, but that is not entirely true. Kading also had some help writing this book from disgraced LA Times reporter Chuck Phillips. Kading forgets there are actual eyewitnesses to Biggie's killing. He spends a lot of time talking about things he knows nothing about. This is a desperate attempt for Kading to salvage his reputation. Suge Knight is a suspect, but not for the reasons Kading talks about. In closing, Kading never attempted to interview me regarding my Biggie investigation. He makes a lot of false statements about me and my part in the investigation by retired LAPD homicide detective Russell Poole. Yeah, I wrote that.
and I stand by it. Yeah, I stand by that statement. Uh, yeah, his uh, he has no credibility. I, I, you know, I couldn't trust him to work with him on the police department. Uh, he's he's self-absorbed, just like uh, the L.A. Times reporter Chuck Phillips, and uh, and they're working together on that book he did. There's no question in my mind. I feel personally that the LAPD has whitewashed the Christopher Wallace investigation by clearing Greg Kading in the Torres case. Do you feel that this has tainted the Christopher Wallace case? Here's what happens when something like that happens, is they give him a choice to retire, resign, or leave, or will continue this investigation. Now, if he did, they do an investigation, when he comes to federal court, he's representing not only the case that he's working, he's representing the Los Angeles Police Department. So internal affairs can conclude their investigation any way they want to conclude it. And he was forced to, to leave. And so in their conclusion, they figure they got nothing to lose. Okay, the suspects, it would be an embarrassment for the LAPD to reveal that their uh, detective on this case was responsible for releasing this killer. Because you got to remember this Kading worked on other cases. So if they were not to clear him and condemn him and this and that, they would have problems with all of his other cases. So. It's a shame that that's the way the system is sometimes, but in my opinion, they, they basically just cleared it on there. He's no longer on the police department, so they don't have to worry about him anymore. However, if if they do an investigation and find he's a corrupt officer and he's lied on this, well, maybe he lied on all the other cases. They didn't want to open that can of worms. Greg has stated that he kept a copy of an alleged confession from Keefe D., can he take that evidence with him when he is forced into retirement? No, he's not supposed to, you know, you're not, unless you have a good reason, like I say, his motivation, of course, right from the get-go was to write this book. And I, I believe that he he and Chuck Phillips wrote this book. I mean, the guy is just, a, he's, he's not an honest guy. And if you talk to, I've talked to the U.S. attorneys out here, that had that Kading case, and, and he's like, his name is Mud in the law enforcement uh, circles. Greg Kading, he's not, he's not trust. He can't be trusted to testify in any case that he's involved in. I mean, that's that's one thing you can tell him. It says he lost his credibility when uh, they had to release a, a convicted killer, and uh, I guess he he was a mobster, so. They had to release him. What do you think of the uh, Tupac assassination films? I know you said that you're working with R.J. Bond. Right, right. The, the ones that I did see, uh, that's what got my attention. And uh, I think they're excellent. I think they're well put together. Uh, and uh, his interview techniques are excellent. And, and a lot of the people that were interviewed were never interviewed by the police. You know, when clues come in, you're supposed to follow up on these clues. And I, RJ knows that uh, for a fact that they haven't really followed up on many, many leads. So I do believe that uh, Suge Knight and Reggie Wright Jr. are responsible. I think the evidence is clear for the Tupac Shakur case. I also believe he's responsible. Both of them are responsible for the hit on Biggie also. But I think the evidence in Tupac is, is mounting and building. If you can get all the people that uh, talked to Tupac before his death, and then uh, some of the key people, Frank Alexander was a key person, but, uh, and a lot of his stuff is documented. You see what I mean? He's a key, he's a key witness, and he's no longer here to testify on the stand in the case so we need to take this case out of LA and we need to take the Tupac case out of uh, Las Vegas and we need to put something together and then go to somebody independent 
and and have them look at the facts. You know, <laughs> that's a that's a shame, but that is just a reality. This is a J Mix exclusive. What up with Shadow? I appreciate R RJ. Uh, you know, you've been doing good work. I mean, better than uh, uh, most investigators that I know. And keep up the good work because uh, I, I do believe that your work is going to be instrumental in solving the, especially the Tupac case. You, you're coming up with uh, good stuff, and you're following up on it, unlike the police department. So, yeah, ain't that the truth? 